You're listening to the Flip Houses Like a Girl podcast, where we educate, empower, and celebrate everyday women who are facing their fears, juggling family and business, embracing their awesomeness, and wholeheartedly chasing their dream of flipping houses. Each episode delivers honest-to-goodness tools, tips, and strategies you can implement today to get closer to your first or next successful house flip. Here's your spiky-haired, breakfast taco-loving host. House flipping coach Debbie DeBeery. Hey, you guys, what's going on today? I hope that whatever you're up to, it's an easy one. So, I'm really excited to share with you this conversation I had with Char Silk out of Oklahoma. It was such a blast talking to her. And I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to do a little public service announcement. Wah, wah. No, but really, this stuff's important. So this time last year, I was in a really different place. Like I was super scared and sad and honestly freaking out. I had a mole removed that I was told was fine. And then two weeks later, I got a phone call saying it was malignant melanoma and I needed surgery ASAP to get the cancer out of my body and to make sure it had not spread to my lymph nodes. I was going to have some biopsies as well. So look, watch your body, please. If you have moles or a mole that is growing or changing or bleeding or looks weird or anything, please go get it checked out. And even if you're told it's fine, get it removed, okay? Please, melanoma is deadly. One person dies every 57 minutes in the US from melanoma. It is an incredibly aggressive cancer and spreads very quickly to other organs. Please, please, please take care of yourselves, okay? I have a very special place in my heart for anyone who is going through the quote unquote waiting for results phase because it is incredibly scary. So please take care of yourselves. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk to Char Silk out of Oklahoma about her first flip and we're going to talk about some other stuff too and if you've ever thought oh my gosh I'm too old to start something new nope I'm too old to do this I actually heard from somebody in their early 30s recently who thought she was too old to pivot into flipping houses I was like oh my gosh you're a child um no but seriously if you've ever thought no I'm too old to pivot into flipping houses. I'm too old to try this. I've really wanted to I have this huge passion for it, but I'm just too old. Or if you've thought, you know what, this area is not great for it. I'm just not even going to try at all. Sometimes you've got to look outside your area. Sometimes you've got to go to a bigger city that's nearby. Just because where you are, your immediate area Maybe it doesn't have a great economy. You can go to areas that are nearby, okay? And you can still make it work. So we are going to talk to Shar. She's going to give us so much awesome information. And I know you're going to get value out of this. And here we go. Why don't you just kind of start with, um, you know, where you live. You mentioned you have a husband and sons and a little bit about your background before you got into flipping. Okay. So we live in Western Oklahoma, but we flip and invest in Oklahoma city, which is a, it's a two hour drive one way for us. So I thought that sounds like a great obstacle to start with. <laughs> Our market out here in Western Oklahoma is just really um, it's very oil field driven mm -hmm. and inundated with lots of properties that just didn't work with my budget. Just mm -hmm. it just would have cash flow right. So we started looking in Oklahoma City. Um, 
And what really got us started, as I had mentioned, um, was podcasts. Jake and I have raised three boys. They're 20, 22, and 23. They all played sports. We never had a down moment. Then those little rascals left me. Who knew they were going to grow up? I mean, they don't prepare you for that. Mm -mm. And so this empty nest sets in, and <clears throat> boy, that was hard. Mm -hmm. I had all the, this abundant amount of time, and I was falling into some depression because there was nothing to do. We uh, we were traveling a little, started listening to podcasts and audio books. We listened to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm -hmm. and it kind of literally became an obsession to get ourselves completely financial free, financially free and do something where we didn't have to work nine to five. Mm -hmm. I mean, which actually, you know, when you have a job, most of the time it's way more hours than that. Mm -hmm. And so real estate had always been something I was drawn to, love to look at houses. I love houses with character. I love doors. I know that's kind of odd. Oh my God. No, I do too. I'm obsessed with doors. Yes, I am. It's almost a fetish. I think, I mean, there may need yeah. to be a support group. <laughs> no, I, I almost started a door company, um, like nine or 10 years ago because I was so obsessed, especially post-war, like fifties, sixties doors. Oh, yeah. I'm obsessed. That is hilarious. I love oh, yay, a fellow yeah. door sister. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> My middle son also, he loves to just drive around and look at doors, you know, and, and it's, speaks a lot about the character of the person living in the home, if you yeah, really think about it. Right, totally. So, anyway, so that's, we, we went to Oklahoma City, found a really good little realtor. I, I chose one that could tolerate me having to, you know, my time was limited, having to drive two hours, plus I work full time. And so, bless this little girl's heart, she was like, all right. And I mean, we were hours. We looked at so many properties where we developed a relationship mm -hmm. and then she started sending me what I didn't find on Zillow. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we've really worked with her a bunch. Our sons have bought houses through her. We've bought and sold houses. So now I consider her a friend. So, so that's how we got started. That's awesome. I'm, I want to jump in real quick here because I'm hearing a lot of women are having a hard time finding realtors who will work with them, which blows my mind because I started as a real estate agent in 2003. So I understand that, you know, sometimes you're going to be working with investors who it may not pay off immediately, but in the long run, it will pay off. Did you have a hard time at all finding a realtor who would work with you? Or was it the first one you found and y'all hit it off? Well, a little bit of both. Um, so out here in Western Oklahoma, it just wasn't a good situation. So that didn't work for us. So I would call or I would try to set up appointments and eh, two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I'm coming from two hours. I'm there at 8 a.m. and we are going hardcore yeah. because I had to do as much as I possibly could. Yeah. Um, I would reach out to some of them and there, I literally had one and, and she was, all in my age bracket, older in her forties, she was like, mm, there's too many out of state investors. I don't think there's any deal. So I was like, well, thanks oh, for that effort. Yeah. And so this one, she is younger. She's about my kids' age, super feisty little thing. <laughs> and so I love the fact that I drug her all over Oklahoma city. Uh -huh. She never complained yeah. once. And I flat out told her, and I'm a very direct person. I said, I'm going to buy houses. I will be a good customer. Right. And you know, I think she was just hungry enough mm -hmm. and young enough yep. and said, okay. And I mean, you know, she, uh, she does work hard for us. I mean, I think she's a great little girl and, and it's a family owned realty. So I think that that also helps. That's just yeah. a personal preference. So yeah. anyway, I really think a lot of her though. I mean, they send me stuff at Thanksgiving. You know, nice. happy Thanksgiving. How is your, how are the boys? And so I feel like that relationship, if you'll build it, it's beneficial for both of you. And I'm good with her making money off of me. Let's be honest. We're not in this for our health and our beauty. We're in it to make some money. And so is she, she's putting in the time she deserves it. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It really is about finding the hungry ones. 
It's kind of like, yeah. it, it's very similar to when you're looking for distressed properties, you want the sellers mm -hmm. who need to sell, not the ones who are kind of thinking yeah. about it, right? There's a different motivation right. level there. So, okay. Right. And when was your first flip completed? It was recent, right? Well, yes. Um, so we bought the house in August of 2018. Okay. Um, my husband had been called off to a job. He was in South Texas. And I know that this happened for a reason and God just did it to test me. I promise you there was no sales service. And he was down there for nine days straight. My little realtor said, hey, I've got this deal. Bids are due by five o'clock. Oh my goodness, I panicked. What am I going to do? Never have even seen the, the uh, property. We Facebook or we video live, Facebook live, and I bought it, made the bid, accepted it by a video. I do not recommend that, by the way, to anyone. Probably not a smart start to my business, but I felt like at that time, if I didn't take the step, I was never going to. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I didn't have my husband's yes, this is great. Go do it. I just said, I'm going to do it. Um, and I did. So we bought it in August. We did a, how we sealed our deal is we did a quick close. I am a, mm -hmm. a big advocate for offering the sellers something that maybe somebody else doesn't. Yeah. I, I'm not always going to have the most money. Right. It's not always about that. No, it isn't. But you have to sometimes learn that. Yeah. I feel like, you know, going. And so, Another thing I have had to learn, and I am by no means seasoned or experienced, is the worst thing they can do is tell me no. Right. And, you know, sometimes that hurts your feelings, right. but I'm just like, you know, if I say it's not going to work at $2,000 more, then it's not going to work. I've looked at those numbers till I'm cross-eyed. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't give in over I thinking that. that you have to do yes. it. Yeah. Yes. I, I work on that because I'm like, sometimes I'm panicked and I'm like, Oh, I said I was going to buy, yeah. you know, two flips in 2019 and two rentals. Oh my gosh, what if I don't get it done? Right. But I have to remind myself, breathe. Yes. <laughs> breathe. Yes, that's yeah. huge. Really, like that is so huge because I, what I often see happen, especially with first time, like brand new beginners trying to get their first deal they lose out on a couple of houses, right? They get really frustrated and then they find themselves in the situation where it's, okay, oh wait, the seller said, if I give them, let's just use your number, like you said, 2000 more than I can get this house. Okay, but did you run the numbers at that or was your max offer 2000 less? Because they think sometimes, well, if I offer 2000 more, that's fine. I'll make up for it somewhere else. <laughs> which is so funny because you do really, if you think about it, because I guarantee you there is a $2,000 surprise in every home. Absolutely. Surprises. <laughs> yes. Stick with yes. your numbers who like yes. uh, put everything else aside and stick with your numbers. And I think as women, we do worry about, Oh gosh, but we said this and are we going to upset the seller if we don't do the 2000 more or will the agent get annoyed with us? I don't think most men think about things like that. You know, it's, is it, no. does it make sense financially or not? And if not move on, but we get so I think up in the, we feeling. overthink it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. I think we overthink it. And then we're like, Oh, but how is that going to make her feel? You know, Oh, she worked eight hours for me on Saturday and we did not get one property purchase. We made five bids. And I can remember I had five offers out at one time and I, was in bed that night and I thought, my good <laughs> Lord, what if all five of them accept, <laughs> which is where I learned, make sure you and your realtor know when you're writing those contracts, always leave yourself in out. I didn't know that. Yes. I mean, I really was just like, oh, I'm going to have to cost that $300,000. Where? <laughs> and by the way, I didn't have that in my back pocket. <laughs> where am I going to get that? Right. And so I, I did learn that. And, and again, from listening to other people yeah. say, hey, did you know? And I'm like, oh, Shazam. Nope, didn't, would have never thought of that. Nobody told me I could. Right. So I'm really working hard on, I am the boss. This is what works for me. What can you do to, to make that work out? Exactly. And so 
Yeah. The last bid I made this week, or, you know, I turned in a contract. I said, you know, hey, I, I've got to see this rental contract before. Go ahead and make the contract. I need the loophole because if this contract, you know, is not a good one for two years, I don't want this place. She didn't even bat an eye, wrote it right in. And so, you know, sometimes we just forget to ask for what we really want. Exactly. Yep. For fear of, you know, what's, what's somebody else going to think? Oftentimes. Yes. Yes. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Okay. So let's walk through the numbers on your first one. You bought it in August, 2018. What did you pay mm -hmm. for it? What was the renovation? All that jazz, all the good stuff we love to hear. Okay. So we bought it for 77,000. So super excited. It cost more than my first house did, by the way. <laughs> so I was nervous. Uh -huh. Met with uh, a recommended contractor. Um, through our realtor, and by the way, that goes back to their relationship too. You know, she had worked with people, so I felt pretty good about taking her recommendations on the work that we were going to, that we couldn't do. Um, so I had this great budget, nineteen nine. I mean, it was in writing, so that was set in stone. I was positive of it. I laugh now about knowing that, but you know, back then, so I thought it was in writing, so it was you know set in stone. Mm -hmm. We ended up selling it for 144, but we didn't sell it until June of 2019. Okay. That's when I learned a very hard lesson about your hold cost oh. and what I didn't figure in my budget. Oh, um, no. And by the way, it was also written in stone that that job wouldn't take, but it just, you know, just a little bit of time. Oh. I giggle now because whatever time you think, go ahead and just double. I mean, I almost... <laughs> think you should double. Um, I got my check when we closed that day and it was 17,000 and some change. Oh my goodness. I could have skipped the two hours home. I was so excited. <laughs> we got in, got to our spreadsheet. Remember I had all these hold costs. So by the right. time I butchered and all the things we didn't have in our budget, you know, our rehab budget, cause I didn't know what I was looking at to be right. real honest with you. I didn't, I didn't think it through as well as I should have. Um, we still ended up clearing a little over 13,000, mm -hmm. which I can remember having jobs when I very first started working that didn't make 13,000 in a year. So I was super pumped still. And it made me think, hey, guess what? I can do this. Awesome. I can always do better, right. but I can do this. That's awesome. That right and there, so, that right there. I, the whole point, I think, of somebody's first flip is for them to do it in a way that makes them want to do a second one. And that looks different to everybody. And if it oh, means, yeah. if it means clearing 13 grand, if it means breaking even and not losing any money, you know, whatever it means to you, forget how it looks on the outside. If it means to you, oh my God, I can do this. And then you go on to build this, you know, amazing business that you love, then great. So I love right, that you were exactly. like, hey, and okay, so the purchase was 77. The the repairs ended up being around what? Well, so my paper said 199. Uh -huh. So you would think, hmm, her math isn't very good. <laughs> yes, I'm giggling. <clears throat> so here's where I learned common sense isn't oh so common. Uh I had questioned the windows in this house. Well, the first mistake now that I know I made is I should have known who I was going to market to. You gotta who know am I way. trying? What, yeah. what, what am I trying to do here? I yep. didn't, I had my, what I didn't have my, who I was going to sell this to. Yeah. And so you really need to do that. But mm -hmm. I mean, again, yay, I got a house. I mean, and that was as far as I had went. Yeah. And so, um, we forgot appliances on our budget. <laughs> Yes, I, and go ahead and giggle because now I'm like, what the heck was I I know, I know. We're and just then <laughs> ugh, I did another silly thing. So we bought a, um, a range, a cooktop in the oven dishwasher. Why did I not buy an icebox? I still to this day cannot tell you why I didn't because in reality, I was selling to middle, middle, middle to lower class probably first time home buyers, probably family. Why did I not help them more? Mm. That ice box is a lot of money. It really is, especially when you think about 
being, go back in when you were younger and had little kids and, you know, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck and an icebox is a big expense. Mm -hmm. I should have put an icebox. Going forward, iceboxes will be in every one of our homes wow. because, you know, they just bought the house. You know, maybe they didn't have the money for a refrigerator. Let's right. help them. Let's, let's help those couples that where my kids are at in That's life. Awesome. I would want somebody to do that for my yeah. kids. Too. Wow. You're awesome. Okay. I love that so much. Well, I'll tell you another reason how we knew that. So when we did our showings, we had our realtor set up a, um, where you get the feedback. I know there's a fancy name for it and we just call it, you know, the, the feedback and they email you and text you about it. Yeah. We knew when yeah. people were going in and yeah. out of the house. Perfect. Um, and several people had kind of hit us on a couple of things. So I think those are super important you know, hey, they didn't like this or they didn't like that. And I learned more from our people that looked at the house that didn't buy it than I did in anything else, I feel like. That's such a great um, tip. And don't take it personally. Yeah. No, it Just did hurt my feelings a couple of times. And I and I did yell at one person. It was on, the, <laughs> it was on my email, but I did yell at them. Um, she wrote, the carpet is not new. Well, that led us to another disaster we had done. So living two hours away, uh, we subcontracted out lots of things. Yeah. The carpet was one. Sure. So our color scheme was a gray and white. I know hardly no one does that. <laughs> they put chocolate brown carpet in that house. Oh, no. Oh, oh it gets better. Oh, I paid oh. for it sight unseen oh. because the guy told me to. He said, I need, I put the carpet in. It's done. Oh. I said, oh, my gosh, okay, I'll pay you as quick as I can. I've oh, learned this. No, I will look at every ounce of your work and inspect it, and you will not get paid until I yeah. feel it is done to my that what we agreed upon way right. back here. But right. I was so scared. Right. You know, I right. was like, okay, I'll pay it. I yeah. walked in the front door, and this was a couple of days later because you know I'm out here in God's country, and uh, I was like, <gasps> oh it's my so, god, it's brown. It was so ugly. Oh, um, he did give me a credit. But that, I should have said, no, thank you. I didn't, didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Took several, you know, negative feedbacks on that. So now I've learned, hey, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Go check it. Right. And, and if it's gray that our theme is and gray that you pick, and I know it was just a boo-boo. The guy sent a hand, the hand grabbed the wrong roller carpet. I know right. that's what happened. Right. But again, not my problem. Right. This is a business. Right. Fix it. Yep. Right. I didn't do that. So <laughs> anyway, um, we had, we had that debacle. Um, then we had to put windows in mm -hmm. and I knew that day and I asked and they said, Oh no, they'll be fine. I ended up having to cough up more money for windows. Incidentally, there were 18 windows in this. Oh my gosh. That's a lot, lot of windows. <laughs> How big yeah, was the house? Was it was, it was, uh, 1627, I believe. And the funny thing about it is that several of them were upstairs. Okay. And so come to find out it costs more money to put windows upstairs. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and it also had a sliding patio door. <clears throat> Fun time. And, um, when I had got it, I also felt like, um, I don't really like this color on the outside. And so I had mentioned it again and I did it paint it. Several people made ugly comments. Mm. Guess what I did later? I painted it uh -huh. <laughs> out of pocket again. Uh -huh. um, I didn't uh, anticipate landscaping and that was an error on my part. You know, I, I should have known, Hey, by the way, if we don't sell this before summer, guess what? You're going to have to oh, mow it and right. it needed some landscaping. Right. So I, I was way off on my budget. Now I know, I mean, I have a checklist now and there are books out there that will help you learn your scopes of work. Yeah. Take the time, read over it. And you don't have to do it. Like they say, get a spreadsheet. I don't yep. care if you draw pictures, right? Just, just have the list. So, yes. you know, Oh, by the way, there's, that many windows, go ahead and do your math and, and just be prepared for right, it. Right. Right. So, yep. Anyway. Totally agree. Okay. So, so trust your gut. So do the things you would want done. Yeah. Yeah. 
and cater to the buyer. Yes. Yeah. Who knew that? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> we do everything for the buyer. Everything. Okay. So you started with a 199 repair budget. And then you got windows thrown at you and a fridge and carpet and exterior paint and landscape. What did you end up at? And holding costs. And holding costs. A uh, little over 20, yeah, a little over 26000 Okay. And that includes with, carrying costs? Yes. yes okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. So seven, okay. That brings me to um, this question. How did you, how did you guys finance this? Did you use outside funding? Did you use your own funding? How did, how did you finance the purchase and the repairs? Well, so here's what I did. I had went to my local bank that I've banked at since I was 16 years old, mm -hmm. told them what I was going to do. My banker a little bit laughed at me and said, what are you thinking? And I said, I, I think I can do this. Um, I had a, you know, a letter of credit for a, I think I, at that point I had 150,000 line of credit. And so I nice. wow. got, I got an evaluation, uh, for the property and I set my budget in. So I had them appraise it as completed. So the numbers were high enough. The appraised value as completed was high enough that I financed the house and the rehab. Now, I, some of that did have to come out of my pocket because here I thought I was spending you know, 20000 Right. didn't. Right. So some of that we did not finance. We really just financed the 20000 that we had originally thought. The rest came out of my back pocket. So don't you know I had guilt over that? Well, of course you did. <laughs> so, anyway, we did it as a single pay. Um, pretty good interest. I think on, on that one we paid right at six, nice. I believe. Nice. Paid it off before it was due. So amen for that. Cause I was, yeah. you know, laying in bed at night. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Um, Cause at that point, you know, if we were going to have to term it out, I didn't have my 20% down. I'd spent my 20% down on beautiful windows. Right. <laughs> and, a, and lawn. 18 of so, them. <laughs> yes. Yay. So I was scared. I mean, the what if will almost drive me insane. Oh, and now I have to just pray. Yes. Yep. I just, it will work out. It yep. will work out. I know. And I if have, it doesn't, we'll go a different way. Exactly. It's and it's okay. It's okay to, yes. to pivot. We will all, it, like pivoting is okay. And if you make a decision, mm -hmm. it was a bad one. That's okay. Make another one. It's okay. <laughs> You've learned. You've we learned. Are, move on. Yeah. We are so yes, bad I at agree. the negative what ifs. So bad. I have to, like, I mean, I'm always practicing. Okay. So instead of going down this terrible rabbit hole of these awful worries, you know, what if this, what if that? I have to say, what if it all goes so freaking great? Like, what if this is amazing? What if this makes people's lives better? Like things like that, because it's so easy to get in that dark space of all the bad stuff that can happen. Yes, yes. And then after we closed and we were driving home, you know, I felt a... Uh, a sense of accomplishment oh, yeah. because guess what? I did do that. Not only did I not lose our retirement, I made us a little bit of money. Awesome. And guess what? We had another one bought. I mean, almost instantly, I might have had a little bit of what I like to call greed goggles on. I probably jumped a little quick on that one because I was like, woohoo, look at me. And so, what does God do? He will put you right back in your place. And He did on that one. But at the end of the day, I have learned some things from everyone. Yeah. You've got to figure out who you're selling to. Mm -hmm. So I love middle-class families. Mm -hmm. I, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm not fancy. The next house I bought, so we, we sold this one at 144. The next one, we were going to go for like 250. Okay, you're talking about a totally different person. Oh, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I forgot that. And so I... I, I, that's not my comfort zone, which I know that it's okay to get out of your comfort zone, but maybe I jumped a little fast. And, and, and in all honesty, I liked the middle class helping a family. Mm -hmm. That's where we, that our third one that we're working on now, that's where we're going with that. Mm -hmm. And so I already feel better about it just because. Good. And I, you're, feel, I feel like it's helping. Yeah. I mean, there, I can totally relate to that. And it, you do have to feel 
some sort of like, um, I don't know, it's not necessarily comfort. Um, it, it is a comfort level, but um, a price point that resonates with you, that you enjoy. I yeah. went luxury once. I didn't love it. I didn't like it at all, actually. I hated every part of it. And I like, I swore, okay, I'm never doing that again. Like that just didn't feel, it didn't, it didn't feel in alignment with me and my values. Like it just didn't. So it's okay. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and again, had I thought it, the process through, I saw dollar signs again with my greed goggles. Yeah. And, and while, like I say, I, I am in this to make money. You have to know how to get there though. And, and that's, that's the mistake I made, you know, Hey, let's, let's think about what we're doing. Let's think all the way through it. And then we'll have the person that's going to buy it, the person we're going to market it to, and the person that's going to benefit from it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, for yeah. sure. So you're, um, okay, wait, I want to come back to two things. One is <clears throat> the sales price on the first one. Was it one, one forty four? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So, I mean, you made nearly a 10% profit, like 10% of the AR or the, of the sales price was your profit. That's pretty dang wow. good. Like, you know, I mean, that's, that's pretty dang good. So, and I mean, uh, oftentimes it's just, it's a numbers game. So the lower the numbers, yeah. it's still 10%. It just looks, the number might look bigger because it's a higher price. Like at 250, right. obviously 10% is 25 grand, but still 10% is pretty darn good lady. Yes, it is. And I mean, my money in my 401k is not making 10%. Oh, right. Exactly. And, but for me, it was the, I needed it to fill that void in my life at first. I mean, I was like, I've got a project. I mean, you know, I'm going to get this, 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 and this. I'm a very big check, check box person. Let's, you know, I need to have things to do to feel accomplished. And so that's how it started with me. It was a project. Well, then it became more because I love, it's such a thrill. I love looking at the houses. I love hunting for the, the light fixtures that are on sale that will work there. I love I love looking on Pinterest at different ideas that we can do. I love every bit of that. And I'm not even girly. So that's such a surprise. Right. I, I totally agree. I can totally relate to that. Yes. I'm obsessed with houses. Yeah. I totally relate to I, that. I, I can look and, and just sit on Pinterest and just look at things to, hey, you could do this for, you know, and you could refurbish this and you could do this. This will cut off of this budget. And I mean, I could literally sit and do that all day long. Uh -huh. And I love, I love looking, you know, several of the women on the Facebook group are posting, Hey, this is what I've got. I love seeing the different ideas. I may not have ever even thought of some of the things they suggest. And I'm like, I know. Oh, what a I great know. idea. I know there are so many creative people out there. I know. I love it. I love it too. I'm like, Oh, I wow. Too. Never think of that. I love that. Yeah. So Okay. And then the one other thing I wanted to touch on, on that was you got a line of credit from the bank, correct? Yes. To do, and it did, it yes. did most of it, except for, you know, maybe uh, yes. around six grand out of pocket. That line of credit, right. was that a home equity line of credit? Was that collab or were they using the house as collateral? We used the house as collateral. Got it. Okay. Perfect. So, I mean, it really worked out for Jake and I to not have any money out of pocket. I mean, we really did because of, because of our own errors. So, you know, that's how I learned my best lessons the hard way. And so had we, had we prepared or knew what we were doing, actually, it wouldn't have, it would have been a hundred percent not out of my pocket, Yeah. but because, you know, so we have a sweet, sweet, sweet deal that that works. Now for, 2020, my goal is to buy, have the two flips, and I, I probably won't have two flips going at the same time ever again. Uh -huh. I, I say that, I, I hate to say that never, but right. I probably won't, and then I want to have two rentals for 2020 right. also. So, of course, you know, that will be more than my, <laughs> than my banker's going to allow. So, we have, um, we go to our local uh, RIA meeting. Uh-huh. A lot of people there, um, 
you know, hard money, different different lenders. So this will be our first year to branch away from our just our local little wonderful bank to Got different it. different lenders. So, I wonder if they'll anyway. increase your line though. You you're proving yourselves. Um, you know, like that's such that probably, is such inexpensive money. I want you to be able to use more of it. Yes, and um, and and they're super flexible about where. I mean, my first house we closed in two weeks, which I mean, that's pretty good for a bank. I mean, yeah. two weeks to have your oh, it's the, abstract, good. the title, the flood. Yes. Yeah. And so they are just super great to work with. I could not ask for any better. Yeah. And so that's what I love the most because some, like I say, whenever we make the contract, that's always my stinger is, hey, guess what? We can close by right. this date. Right. So, right. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. You've got to be able to somehow differentiate yourself to at least get your foot in the door. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So you mentioned your sons, are they involved in the business with you at all? Or are you basically running this, all of this, all of the projects? Well, so that is my goal is, is to have them involved. We've always worked as a family. If one's working, we might as well all be working. And mm -hmm. so, um, our oldest son has the, our third flip. It's going right now. And we've let him take lead on it because I want him to either have the, I don't want it to be forced. I want him to have the love for doing it or not. Yeah. Um, and so all of the boys help work, you know, tree limbs. Uh, in our first flip, it got broken into twice. By the way, that goes to hold time too, because when they look vacant, <laughs> oh, people, gosh. kids will start coming up with creative ways to get in there. Oh, so gosh. the boys had to go put new, put the window that they busted and clean up the, the things that they had left and mopped. Um, so yes, all of them look, and there are times when they'll go inspect a property that if I'm just at, a little too nervous about it, one of the boys will go meet our our little realtor and sh they'll say, eh, you know, and if it's in a neighborhood that they don't feel secure in, we, we pass. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Just because, and I hate to put a stigma, but you know, if you don't, I'm going to be up there by myself and oh, yeah. I may work till midnight. I don't want to ever put myself into a position and the boys wouldn't either. Yeah. So no, uh, they, we all, we all work at it. Yeah. Um, our youngest, he's in college and, you know, he was painting cabinet doors last weekend with us so we could get this, this third flip, you know, we are way behind schedule. So, you know, everybody has to work. Were so, there some issues that came up that put you off schedule or what happened on that? On the first one or the third one? On this one that you said that you're so off schedule. Oh, yes. <laughs> this would be my, my biggest lesson uh -huh. that I have learned. Okay. If you have a contractor that is not doing what he said, you've addressed it. You've addressed it again. You have been very clear. Fire him. Oh my gosh. You, you and I are like, seriously, such parallel lives. That was my biggest lesson that I had to learn. And it took me a couple of years, if I'm being honest, it took me a couple of years of being slapped around and pushed around and losing money because I wasn't willing to stand up for myself. And so I love that you're saying this, like it's, you've got to get rid of people well, who aren't performing. Like I get you, that you want to give them a little bit of a chance, but when they show you who they are, believe them, right? Like my Angela said. Exactly. And here's me. Oh, yeah. And I am the sappiest sad heart. And so yes. um, this one we closed on in October should have been done at the latest mid-December. We are not even, I mean, like I am embarrassed to tell you how behind. Um, and I, so this was a new contractor because our original one, you know, this is our son's flip and he's down in Moore where ours are in Oklahoma City. And so we used a different guy because ours was too booked. He could not get to us. And so we checked references and everything and he has flaked. Our, oh. our 
agreement with him was to pay for the materials. He had ordered them, pay for the materials, then we would pay out the labor. I felt pretty secure about that, I'll just uh -huh. tell you. Yeah. Yes, he might have forgot that one step of ordering our materials. Oh my gosh. And so we are to the, the expensive part, the granite countertop, your flooring that we do not have. So this has taken my budget and just threw it out the window. In addition, has put us all in such a, a huge bind. We had anticipated having that listed yeah. now. Right. Well, we'll be lucky to get it listed by March. I mean, let's be honest, we're, oh, we're at mid-January. And in addition, now we've had to hire an attorney. We sent a, <clears throat> a certified letter to him. And, mm -hmm. and I know that he didn't order the step. I'm positive. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we won't get that money back. Oh, Lesson gosh. learned. I hate it that it's our son's first flip. And he's had to, I mean, I hate, hate, hate that. Yeah. But let's just do all the worst now and we'll get it over. With. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh and, my gosh. And, you know, the deal is when I knew that he, so he should have had it done. Let's just say mid November. That was what he told us when it was December and he wasn't done. I did call another meeting with him and said, Hey, he said, Oh, two weeks. And I, he just, the employees, the guys that were coming in to do some of the work, they were telling our son, hey, he's not paying us. I should have right then oh, cut him loose. But I was still holding on to the fact that he had our supplies. And I had said, could you just go ahead and get the flooring here? Right. And he said, oh, it's on hold. I should have known right then. Oh, girl. I oh, should have known. Gosh. But I, I benefited of the doubt. And there is no benefit of the doubt. So. Right. And. And the deal about it is I do think he's not, I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's made some bad choices mm -hmm. and has caused this. But again, yeah. this is my business buddy and you're messing with our lives. I'm going right. to need you right. to go away. <laughs> right, right. Okay. This is that. It's exactly yeah. the awareness that I had to come to. This is my livelihood. And I, like, I have a son I'm not going to be jacked yeah. with anymore. Right. Like at some point right. it's like no more. <laughs> Right. And oh so my gosh. That's a what hard a nightmare thing to do. Yeah. It's a yeah. hard thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And so absolutely. I battle that. I'm yeah. always going to give somebody else the benefit and then I'll work three times harder yeah. to cover for your slacking, <sighs> which really, how silly is that? We are so <laughs> similar. It, like that's crazy. So similar. Oh my gosh. So yeah. And I mean, the only thing you can do is like you said, you get rid of them and then you move on and you can't dwell on it right. because sitting and dwelling time is money. Like just keep moving, right. keep putting the, and, one foot in front of the other. And learn from what I did. So yes. here's, here's my stupid, I always say this, this is the stupid thing I did. Yeah. <laughs> so I did check his references. I mean, I, you know, yes, done a good job. What I should have done is I should have way, I should have went and paid for the supplies myself which I realize, you know, they get a contractor's discount. If you're going to do that, then get the invoice. Yes. Oh, here is really $5,061 yeah. worth of material right. for just our house. Right. right. And so that's an error I made, but you trust in that. Why would somebody buy appliances for another house that on your money? Right. I don't know why I didn't, I wouldn't do it, but right. some people do. Right. But, right. And then if you feel like they're, piddling during the week the the you know I pay you to work I'm I I'm a worker I will turn out some work I need you to do the same then you need to be more on top of um hey Sally here showed up at 10 and left at one well, who in the world gets to work those hours right. so <laughs> yeah so anyway yes and that does happen I'm like if at six o'clock, half of the day is gone. Let's go, people. Right, exactly. Uh, not everybody is that way. <laughs> <laughs> totally, so. totally. Yeah. So what would you say has been or is the your favorite part? Or what are your favorite parts of the entire flip process, if you have any? Oh, I love, I love the, 
I love the scheduling part. I love the, let's see if, you know, we find a light that's on sale that'll work uh-huh. right there. I mean, I love, yeah. love, love, love yeah. digging for stuff Me or going too. to discount places. I, uh, I love the project and the completion. I like to say, hey, we're going to get the kitchen cabinets painted this week and it's done and they're pretty. I yes. love the feeling of accomplishment that yes, gives you. Yes, it is. But then I also like to go back by, and I, I've done it on both of the flips that have sold, just to, I, I just, I feel like, look what I did. I look know. at that beautiful home there on the corner. So I think it's accomplishment with me. Absolutely. I hear that word often. It's that sense of accomplishment. And oh my gosh, I did that. And it's, it's a tangible thing that lives like it just, it keeps living on and you can drive by and see it. And sometimes you drive by and they've totally killed the landscaping and it makes you cry, but the house is still there and beautiful. And I'm just like, what do you mean you're parking your car in, on the grass? Oh, I, God. Should I have put up a no parking on the grass? Sorry. Right. Oh. <laughs> you're not using the property right. <laughs> yes, I know. And you didn't mow diagonal. What's right. Going with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's so I have funny. But maybe it's such a control issue. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. No, but it's not. We just I like what we like. Looking. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't understand why everybody else is not on my, on my <laughs> same exact page. Right. I love the whole process. I love looking at them. I love the thinking. Now, I'm not real good at like our, our little realtor. She'll be like, oh, we can knock this all down. And in five seconds, in her mind, she's drawn this picture. I'm still over here looking at this hole in the wall thinking, <laughs> what did she just say? <laughs> I would love to learn or get me one of those programs where I can do that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. I'm a visual learner, uh-huh. so I I can't do that as well as some. Yes, but I I that's my goal is I yeah. want to learn to be able you know because a lot of times you know if you just move a few little things, man, you have changed that space. So, so true. I, I I battle that, but that's yep. what my I'm going to work on. Yeah, I I just love the whole process. Yeah, so, absolutely. And staging. Uh huh. I did not know about staging. Um, in the first one, we did not do well on that. Okay. I think had I known, I would have sold it quicker. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't trust my gut about the windows and the painting. So that was my first mm-hmm. thing. And then had I staged that house, I think it would have sold a lot quicker. So if I was going to give any advice to a newbie, stage. Yes. And if Amen. you can't afford it, if it's not in your budget, you can do that. Yeah. Amen. You can thrift store. Facebook marketplace, yep. borrow from your mama, right. you can stage stuff, move yep. stuff out of your house. Nobody ever comes to my house anymore anyway. So stage it, make it feel like the home you think it's going to be. Exactly. People buy homes. People yes, buy do. homes. They don't want to buy a property, right? We, as investors, we right. buy properties, but buyers, right. the end buyers, they're looking for homes in furniture and accessories makes it feel like home. And on top of that, if there isn't stuff in the house to catch their attention and their eyes, what happens is they start scanning everything and they find all the little bitty details that were missed. And then they start deducting price in their head. They're like, hmm, yeah, I don't think this is a $144,000 house. I think this is, you know. Right. And so you've lost what you could have invested rather cheaply, yeah, I might add. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to go and buy brand new luxury furniture. Sure. I'm not saying that because mine is stored right now because our flip isn't done. It's sitting in the barn. I mean, it's all covered, but mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's going to live a long life of being transported back and forth. Uh-huh. Um, so buy right. It, I mean, I don't care what you're doing Buy right. I mean, if you're, if you're buying a car, whatever you're try to get yourself in a good position because you never know when the other shoe might drop and you need to get out of it. Right. Yeah. So totally, totally. And did you have, I know we're going to wrap up here soon, but were, when you first got started, what were some of your biggest fears that you really had to either overcome or kind of ignore, like embrace and ignore and, and, and just get into action? What were some of your fears about this house flipping venture? My first fear, because we're older, we're 40, my husband and I are 45, is 
what if I have spent money we really shouldn't be spending at this point in our life? That was my first fear. My second fear, two seconds after I signed was, oh my gosh, what is Jake going to think? Because I did this on my own. I Uh said, yep, we're buying it. Uh Sign away. So that was my, was disappointing him. You know, Uh have I, have I made a bad choice? Did I buy in a crappy neighborhood? Is this a crappy house? You know, is the roof going to fall off? Probably tomorrow. I mean, it probably will. (laughs) And so those were my inner fears. Yeah. Then as we got into it, my fears, and, and these were justified as the things I didn't see and didn't know to prepare for. Yeah. And the only way you can combat those is practice. Oh, yeah. You've got to, yep. by the way, you're going to need appliances, lady. Duh. <laughs> um, and, and, and you're going to need things that make somebody else want it. And I didn't, yeah. I didn't think the process through. Yeah. Yeah. So those were my fears as the, what if I can't do it right? Yes. And now I feel better about myself. I mean, I, I make mistakes every day. I, I mean, just like I told John, this third one, I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Um, and I knew better. But you, I, I feel like your biggest thing to accomplish is telling yourself, do this, do the best you can, and then move on. Because everyone's going to be different. I mean, yes. there's going to be a mess in everything you do. Yeah. It, it, there really is. I mean, oh, for sure. everything. For sure. So, for sure. Anyhow, I love that. Like, just that's, take the plunge. Yes, take the plunge. Exactly. Well, those words right there. I think are really great words to end on because it's like, it sums it all up beautifully. Good. So helpful. Thank you so much. I'm going to have you back on. We're going to talk as soon as you get through with this third one, we're going to, we're going to come on here. We're going to have a full debrief of project number three. It's going to be what not to do. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's beautiful. It's great. Get them over with. Right? Like you said yes. before, like just get them over with up front. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, awesome, I have appreciated Char. the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank Debbie. you very much. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Uh, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Was that so good or what, you guys? Oh my gosh, such a fun conversation. And I know that you guys are going to get so much out of this. So, Thanks again to Char. And if you have a first flip story that you want to share, please reach out to me because this is where the magic happens, y'all, when we share our stories with each other. All right. So reach out to me and let me know you want to share your story and we'll do so. All right, you guys, until next time, go out there, flip houses like a girl, leave people and places better than you find them and make it a great day.